This is for the courageous artist. Place a prepared box frame over your painting. Lift up one end to check if it has been properly centralized over the picture and do the same for the other side. Adjust when necessary. Draw a pencil line around the outside of the box. Trim away the excess paper with a pair of scissors or a craft knife and a cutting mat. Now don't cut on the pencil line, rather leave an extra 2 millimeters outside the pencil line. The watercolor paper is 140 pound or 300 grams per square meter weight. Thinner paper will tend to buckle and cause problems. Now make sure your hands are clean when handling the paper. We don't want any marks on the paper at all. A final check before mounting is to make sure there is an overlap of the paper to the box frame. Now the mounting is not a slow process. You need to work reasonably fast because the gel is fast drying. This is not too critical on small paintings but more so on larger paintings. There are two types of gel. One type is white and the other semi-transparent and they both work equally well. When applying the gel, it is important to work it right up to the edge and not too thinly. We must leave no gap for the paper to hook on and lift off the board. Before I forget, don't mount the paper to a flexible surface. That's the reason we are using this type of surface, a solid board. Use a stiff bristle brush to smooth out the applied gel. Now we need to apply gel to the underside of the painting. Place the painting face down on a clean sheet of paper and when applying the gel, make absolutely sure to hold it down with sufficient pressure to stop it from moving. If you move it while applying the gel at the edges, the chances are that some may leak onto the painted surface, which may cause streaks during the waxing period. Be extra careful when brushing the gel onto the paper edges. Place the piping lightly onto the box frame. Feel around the edges making sure every edge has its overlap of paper. And if necessary, slide the painting into its proper place. Carefully apply pressure without moving the painting. Place a heavy flat weight on top of the painting and press down hard again. There is also no harm in adding extra weights. Leave for a few hours to dry before removing the weights. This is where you show your courage. The wax is very workable as it is neither a hard nor a liquid wax. 
Before starting the waxing process, be sure to erase the pencil lines. It will be impossible to remove them once the wax is applied. Use an artist's matte wax, which is also a varnish that can be used on oil and acrylic paintings. Apply it liberally to the painting with a lint-free cloth. Don't be afraid. It will not spoil your painting. Start preferably from a corner and work your way inwards. It is best applied using a circular polishing motion. Don't let the cloth run dry. Refresh often with more wax until the whole surface has been adequately covered. Although the wax varnish seals the paper adequately, this is a more durable layer than the wax varnish. As a professional artist, I prefer no comebacks on any of my paintings. Now, there are times when a moist rag is required to wipe off any accumulated dust, etc. Again, use the varnish liberally You will notice that I have been very thorough with this final coating. On it hangs your reputation. Check against the light to see if you have any dull spots. This way you can also spot any areas where there is an excess of wax. Correct all this until there is an overall even shine. The paper overlap has ensured that we have varnish right to the very edges after trimming. Place the box frame upside down on a cutting board and trim with a very sharp craft knife. Hold the knife at a slight angle away from the side and trim right against the lower edge. This gives a slight bevel to the paper edge. It also makes it harder for the paper to be hooked and lifted off by accident. Trim the little pieces of paper that occur at the corners. As a final check, run a finger around the edges to feel if there are any rough spots. When you are satisfied, rub some polyurethane varnish on the cut edges to seal them as well. It is very easy to forget to apply wax to these edges. This application seals the edges from moisture entering in under the paper and causing discoloration and or mold forming. To make ready for hanging, we need some strong twisted nylon cord, the craft knife, a pencil, and a large heavy stapler. Now don't try and use the small stapler used for stapling a few sheets of paper together. It will not work. When the box frame is in the upside down position, it is important to make sure the top of the painting is toward you. And this is where we are going to attach the string. Mark a position somewhere between a quarter and a third away from the top edge of the painting. And use a ruler or a piece of paper to transfer this length to the other side. Staple one end of the cord with a short overlap. And then turn this overlap back over the staple and add another staple to form a secure anchor point. Pull the cord taut and staple it at the other end. Once again, pull the cord over the staple and add another staple again to form an anchor. Trim with a craft knife. 